let me just start with uh, with my slides. So um, what I'm going to talk about is should Wikipedia become child appropriate or not? And how does an encyclopedia for children look like? And why do we find it sometimes so difficult to think about children and wikis? I would like to share here the experience I have gained over the last 10 years. I have co-founded a wiki encyclopedia for children, the Klexicon. It's in German and it is written by adult volunteers. And the target group, they are children from 8 to 14 years old. Next one, please. I also want to talk systematically about the components of a wiki and what they mean for children. So I will not only use my lexicon experience, but also insights from my book about wikis. I hope that this reasoning and mapping later will give us a good overview for the discussion. What is our attitude on education? So what can go wrong when we try to support children? Let's have a look at the One Laptop Per Child project, when the idea was to provide poor children in poor countries with a cheap laptop to improve the children's education. However, the initiators had surprisingly little interest in children and the situation in poor countries, because they came from a hacker culture, and they assumed that children would learn independently with the computers, that the children would handle the computers with care, and that they would repair the computers by themselves if necessary. So the letter failed simply because uh, many parents of the children simply didn't have the money to buy spare parts. And apart that from the fact that many schools did not even have constant electricity. But why did donors give so much money to these initiatives? Because they were attracted by the values and sentiments behind the project. The donors considered themselves to be educated and they liked working with computers. So it appeared to them that poor children do the same and escape poverty through education. And of course, they thought the cheap laptop was cute with the antenna that were called bunny ears. Unfortunately, the cute antenna contributed to many children not taking the laptop so seriously because it looked more like a cheap toy. So what I intend to say here, we adults love to see children doing what we like to do. We like to see ourselves and the children, and perhaps this sometimes makes it difficult for us to realize what expectations we actually have of children and whether these expectations are realistic. But let's keep talking about cuteness. A few years ago, I was teaching a seminar at a university in Germany. The students were future teachers of German. And uh, yes, I showed them a text. It was written by an eight-year-old girl. It had written it for the Klexikon, for our encyclopedia. And the text had a few spelling mistakes, but more important to me were shortcomings in the structure and factuality. One student said, but what's the problem? I think it's cute. And I replied, uh, yes, please do. But imagine this. A child on a Sunday afternoon wants to look up something on the internet for school. In that situation, a child isn't looking for something cute, but for good and useful content. So in the 10 years that I have been working on the Klexicon, I've seen time and again that some adults have rather special ideas when it comes to a children's encyclopedia. But to be honest, before I started with the Klexicon, I had no other ideas either. So here are four examples. One, a university student once told me that writing for a children's encyclopedia couldn't be that difficult because it is only for children. Two, a new volunteer wrote an article for the Klexicon. I tried to explain to the gentleman that the text was far too complicated. He said that his text was excellent. If some children find it too difficult, they should learn to read better. Three, someone else said the articles in a children's encyclopedia should ideally be written by children. Children are the target group, and children themselves know best what interests children. Uh, besides, you can save a lot of work this way, then you don't have to write the articles by yourself. But that make me, makes me wonder. I am a German man. Does that mean that I am automatically 
a wonderful author for German men? And are children books not also written by adults like Astrid Lindgren or Berta Bratt? Four, a teacher had her pupils write articles for the lexicon because she had a lesson to spare. But the quality of the text was very low. I also found plagiarism in them. For example, whole sentences were copied from Wikipedia. The teacher didn't understand why I had a problem with this. After all, the child in question had delivered a very good test by the child's own standards. Right, what did Michael and I learn for the lexicon? It is completely pointless to let children write something just like that. We were able to save some texts with a lot of reworking, and even then we were unsure whether there wasn't plagiarism in the text or whether the facts were even correct. The text actually had to be more or less rewritten. It would have taken us less effort if we had written the articles ourselves from the start. Does this mean that children are not involved in the lexicon at all? No. We visit schools and we talk to the children about the content of the lexicon. They tell us what content they would like to see and whether they have found any mistakes or difficult words in an article. We also got to know a teacher who had the children write articles in class. Martin talked intensively with the pupils about the aims of an encyclopedia, about text structure, about the phases of text production, and why is it useful to receive people feedback at all. Yeah, you know, collaboration is always a, a problem. So the teacher planned several weeks for the class project, and at least some useful texts were produced, but only, really only because of this thorough preparation. Yeah, that is the dilemma. At school, what does writing look like? The, ob the objective at school is that children learn something. Of course, they can make mistakes on their learning journey, and that's not a bad thing. After all, they work in the classroom. Nobody sees their texts except the teacher, and the teacher assesses the texts according to whether the individual, ch individual child has made progress. Great. But things suddenly look very different when texts are published. Published texts must comply with certain rules. Texts that are published must comply, uh, for example, uh, you are not allowed to slander anyone, not even celebrities. Otherwise, you can get into real trouble. So when we founded the lexicon, we asked ourselves, what is really important to us? That children have another free space to practice writing or that we offer good content? The aim of the lexicon is therefore to provide good content for children. And what does good content look like? What does child-friendly mean? Let's put it this way. First of all, content should not harm children. Right. For example, a speech of the German president should be harmless to children. Yes, you can call that child-friendly. But the content is really aimed at but if the content is really aimed at children, then that is not enough. The German president's speech is harmless, but boring for children. So content that is explicitly aimed at children must be also relevant and understandable. And about understandability, here an example. Most of the water on Earth is salt water. Only 3.5% of the water is fresh water that we can drink. All right, many grown-ups can easily understand the sentence, however, is this suitable for children? We the lexicon examined school curricula to determine when German children typically learn about decimals and percentages. The age varies depending on the state and school type. Some children learn about them at 10 years old. Others might be 12 year old, uh, years old or even older. And then it takes time for children to fully grasp these concepts and use them confidently. For this reason, we avoid using decimals and percentages at all. And by the way, ChatGTP suggested this wording to me. Most of the water on Earth is salty and we can't drink it. Only a tiny part, like a small piece of a big puzzle, is fresh water that we can drink. 
I think that explanation is actually quite good. Unfortunately, there is no one big textbook on how to create a children's encyclopedia. So when Michael and I started with the Clexicon, we had to learn a lot from different disciplines and from experience. I also looked at other wikis for children as they are available in several languages. Um, yeah, there I often saw that the texts were not always written well, or I thought an article was quite good. No, actually quite good as a text, but it wasn't particularly written or comprehensible for children. And I also discovered the following. So this is from another wiki, uh, Wiki Kids uh, from the Netherlands. And uh, yes, uh, well, you can read it for yourself. I'll give you a couple of seconds. All right, and now you think, Zico, why were you so stupid and leave the translated with uh, deeple.com? But the reason for I could have translated it myself, actually, but I intentionally used a mach machine translation so that you don't think I'm translating with a bias. So this is just the neutral machine. So, and I once had a conversation with a gentleman who sits on the board of that site, uh, WikiKids, and he said that this article was perfectly okay. After all, children should learn about the, re the realities of life at an early age. So this is his opinion, not mine, and we would never allow such things in the lexicon. Dear friends of free knowledge, let's move on to mapping, which I promised to you. So, and for this task, I like to use my wiki model from my book because I want to know what a wiki consists of and what questions you can ask when it comes, for example, to children. And the wiki model is intended to provide an overview. And I have a first chapter from my book in English translated on my user page on English Wikipedia. If you want, I can give you a link later. Um, yes. Um, yeah, let's start here. Why not? A wiki has an owner, you know, so this is the Wikimedia Foundation in this case. And there are many points we could discuss here, and Wiki already uh, talked about it, but in general, yes, a Wiki owner can, of course, ask itself which goals it is pursuing with the Wiki, and we will talk more about later. This Wiki owner runs a website, the Wiki, and here you can ask yourself how the Wiki is designed. Can children understand how it works? Does the layout and branding appeal to them? Or also, should there be a technical age check? And how would it uh, real, be realized? And the content of the wiki, so child-friendly content, that is a big topic in itself, so I won't go into detail about that uh, here. But then, yes, the reception of the wiki, children as readers. How do children learn about the, the website? In what situation do they use the website, etc.? And yes, what is a wiki famous for? In a wiki, the readers can become contributors. And this means that someone changes the roles. And yes, one could ask whether this possible role change looks different for children than for adults, etc., etc. So now, being a contributor, or this is the letter M for someone who modifies a wiki, Wikipedia, someone who edits. So as we have seen, yes, when you write something for the public, that is a great responsibility. And here we can ask ourselves, for example, if a minor is editing, wouldn't it need a declaration of consent from a parent or guardian? Then collaboration with other people in the wiki, you know, in the, in the wiki community. So that's a platform on which complete strangers meet each other. A wiki community appreciates certain values such as personal responsibility, individuality, self-learning, standing, standing up for yourself. That's a true Wikipedia, right? But can children thrive in such a community? Can they protect their interests sufficiently? Etc., etc. And something we often forget about, what about the sources? You know, so... Um, yeah, the sources. So we have the world we are writing about, the world with its objects. Experts write expert literature, the so-called sources about the world. 
And this expert literature has to become the basis for Wikipedia articles, uh, footnotes, and so on. But what about children? If children write an article, what sources could they use? Can children read the expert literature? What about the world that is described? And you can also ask a lot of questions here. For example, in Wikipedia, we sometimes see photos in which children can be seen. Did the parents always give permission for that? And finally, in the center of the chart, there are the law and the rules. And this is so important that I'm going to switch to another chart. So I made an overview of where the rules that, is, that are relevant in a wiki come from. So I, I hope that the letters, uh, the, the font is not too small, but we see here at the top, so, you know, macro level, um, uh, Luhmann would say, subsystems of society, isn't it? So at the top, we see government. Government is important, the law of the state, and not everything is relevant, but some is. And when we talk about children, well, there are the regulations for protection against harmful content for young people, and maybe a lot of yeah, law and ordinances we are not aware of at the moment, you know. And then there are rules from organizations on the meso and exo level, partners of the movement or organizations that may not belong to the government. So if you don't follow their rules, you gone, you will not go to jail. But they can still be important. Think of child protection organizations that make recommendations for child-friendly content. And then, as we have seen, there's the wiki owner, the Wikimedia Foundation, which can set rules for example, but not only via the terms of use. And finally, there's the community of contributors. So a community can also set rules for itself within the law of the state and the rules of the owner, of course. So for a specific wiki and a specific, a specific purpose, you would therefore have to carry out a corresponding analysis, which law or which rules apply on which level. And of course, rules, they are only a means to an end. So actually, the wiki owner must first decide what he wants with the wiki, and then he adapts the rules. And uh, yes, maybe this is, is a side thing, but this is a very important thing I like to mention at this at this place. There are people who say things like this to me, an encyclopedia just for children? That's a waste of resources. It is much better to create a simple encyclopedia that is there for three target groups, children, the mentally impaired or challenged, and people who have a foreign mother tongue. That is scalability, then the investment is really worthwhile. And allow me to take a different view. I have spoken to people who actually work with children, the mentally impaired and foreigners. I have also been involved in wikis for these target groups. My experience is that the three target groups have very different needs. For example, children want to know where the little babies come from, but they are not necessarily interested in every detail. When I write for ad adults, on the other hand, I have to take them serious as adults, and uh, I have to think and write very differently. And yes, to be absolutely honest, um, I have a certain suspicion. Maybe, maybe some people think we already have our flagship Wikipedia in English. It is for normal people, able grown-ups who speak the language, uh, the language. And then, on, unfortunately, we still have to look after the rest of humanity. Well, we do with, with a simple English Wikipedia and everyone is taken care of. And as I said, this is not the way I think about it. I believe that the website works best when it is designed for a specific target, for a specific target group that you take seriously. And the conclusion, the foundation should analyze the current situation and make a decision. And I have five options here. Option one, Wikipedia remains exactly as it is and the foundation remains silent about the suitability for children. Wikipedia remains as it is, number two, and the foundation explicitly states that it is not suitable for children. 
three, Wikipedia has to be changed so that it at least is harmless for children. Maybe not interesting, but harmless for children. Four, Wikipedia has to be changed so that, is, is, so that it is explicitly aimed at children. And number five, remain, uh, Wikipedia remains as it is, but we try to ensure that it is at least not blatantly inappropriate for children. And yeah, my personal opinion on this, uh, you can already guess this, if you really want to make Wikipedia suitable for children, uh, then that would have serious consequences. And I believe that most Wikipedians and readers would not want that. And neither does the foundation think it is true. But think of option five. It would be really useful to talk about how to make Wikipedia more pleasant for all readers. So this is actually already the next slide, but let it be like this. Namely, uh, we should recognize that different readers have different needs. For example, in some Wikipedia language versions, there's the option so of not having certain content displayed immediately. So you can only see that problematic content when you click on a button, as an example. Right, yes, and uh, thanks. This is to summarize my thesis here. First, the Wikimedia Foundation should think more about children as a target group. Second, Wikipedia will never be truly child-friendly, but it can and should be improved. Three, children are worth having an encyclopedia designed especially for them. Four, the lexicon, can con the lexicon concept ensures that the wiki is truly suitable for children. There's much more to say about this concept uh, than I have to be able here in short to, to show in short. And I would like, uh, if you want to take, uh, to have a contact with me to talk about it. And number five, yes, and Wiki already said it to discuss children and wikis, the Edu Wiki user group is the right platform in the global movement. Who, if not us? Thank you.